Hi everyone, um, Andrew here again. <laughs> and uh, today I wanted to talk to you um, specifically um, for some of my own students who are asking about how to hold the violin without a shoulder rest or chin rest. Um, many of you know that many, many violinists do play without a shoulder rest or a chin rest. Um, I don't require it of my students. Uh, I don't believe uh, sort of philosophically that there is anything innately or inherently better about playing without a shoulder rest or a chin rest. For me, I do it because I tried probably nearly a dozen different uh, kinds and brands and shapes of shoulder rests. And uh, let's see, I got a pile here. Oh, probably 20 or so different chin rests, some of them custom. And I never really uh, quite found the, the pairing for me that was comfortable until I, I eliminated the shoulder rest altogether. And then I found that I could, I could hold the instrument comfortably um, with most different chin rests. It doesn't really matter so much um, uh, once I figured out how to hold it without a shoulder rest. So I'm going to go through just a few fundamentals and sort of uh, tips, tricks on how to do it um, for anyone who is curious. Um, so a lot of people kind of think that uh, they go to try to play without a shield rest for the first time, nothing here, and uh, they'll kind of jam it into place a little bit like this, um, which uh, a lot of people will find very uncomfortable, and they'll say, this isn't for me, that's not the way I'm going to hold it, I'll, I'll use a pad or a rest or something. Um, the truth is, that's not quite all there is to it. It's not that the instrument is being crammed in here, um, and sort of squished with your with your shoulder and and what have you neck and shoulder um, I did this for a long time and you can see this the scar that it left um, uh, holding the instrument that way is not something I recommend it can be painful um, it can be exhausting um, and it can really limit um, uh, vibrato and, and different things um, uh, so I don't advise that rather I think of it as being sort of three or maybe four um, different uh, parts of your body kind of contributing contributing to uh, the balance of it. Um, so the first one is the, the instrument should rest on your collarbone. That's step one. Yeah, you can see my collarbone is kind of huge. Um, not everyone has such a huge collarbone. It might make it easier to play um, if you do, um, but it isn't, it isn't necessary. You should always be able to do it um, probably as long as there's you know, something there for it to rest on. Um, for me, mine's so huge that you can hear the violin when it hits it. Um, not a big deal. Uh, first thing, it rests there. Some people prefer to rest it sort of this way, going out to their left. Um, some people prefer to have it further out this way, turning in. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, I think I kind of go somewhere in the middle. Uh, where and what angle it rests at is is not particularly important. Just step one, rest it on your collarbone. Uh, after that, I look to the left and look down just a little bit. And sometimes I have the sense that I'm pulling back, just giving myself a double chin just a tiny little bit. I, I look to the left, I look down, and I pull back just a tiny, tiny bit. You can see most chin rests have this little lip here. I don't know how well you can see it with the camera. There's a little sort of lip here. Um, in fact, some people use uh, what is quite literally called a, a chin lip or a chin rest lip, and it's only that. It's basically a bar that just goes straight across, and there's no uh, there's no additional sort of jaw uh, carving. Um, so for some people, that's that's quite enough. Um, it, but that little lip does help you sort of get a grip with that sort of uh, part of your jaw. Um, so those two things will help. It's sort of 50% uh, look to the left, look down, and pull back. Um, so you get your jaw sort of not pressing down, but almost gripping. You get some sort of friction there, and then rest on the collarbone. Um, so that's half and half already. That makes things easier. Um, the last thing I sort of do uh, is I have a tendency to arch my back just a tiny little bit. And what that does is it, it levels the instrument out just a tiny little bit, so it's not quite so slanted. I find if the instrument is slanted, it will fall down, or I feel it will fall down. Um, if I rest it on my collarbone, look to the left, look down, and then arch my back just a tiny little bit, 
it gets level enough where it's it's mostly stable. Um, so now we're sort of thirds here. We have one third uh, collarbone, one third look to the left and down and back, and a third arch your back just a little bit. Um, and then often I will add one thing which we don't really talk about so much, which is the left hand. Um, for me, my left hand uh, really actively contributes to holding the instrument. Um, I think this thumb, uh, let me go this way, um, this thumb is really uh, an important part for me. Um, whether I am shifting up, um, this way, if I shift up often I will move the thumb first and then everything else. If I shift back often I will move the thumb and call back. Sometimes I'll do the opposite, I'll move my fingers back and then the thumb. Um, depending on the, the context of the passage. Um, but I, I think if I get a, a sort of firm grip um, with my thumb, not that I'm squeezing, that's kind of a different thing. Um, you don't want sort of to be squeezing uh, and pressing uh, all the time because that can add tension here and, and other problems. But there is weight on the thumb. The instrument does rest there and it should support that actively as opposed to kind of being un not touching anything. Um, and so that's the last 25%. You sort of have, you know, 25% rest on collarbone, 25% uh, jaw by looking to the left, looking down and pulling back, 25% arching your back, and 25% of the hand. Um, and, and I find this to be a very comfortable way to play. It doesn't terribly matter what chin rest I have. Um, if I have a particularly slippery shirt, I might use one of these uh, little um, cosmetic pads. Um, and I just put it to the back. Sometimes I'll use a rubber band or I'll just set it here. Um, and that will keep it from sliding so much. Um, once in a great blue moon, oh, I should mention, there's also an Artino pad. They look like this. They're called the Artino Magic Pad. These will actually stick to the instrument without damaging the varnish. Um, and it's quite true. They won't damage, <laughs> they won't damage the varnish. I never have had that happen. Um, I also will sometimes use one of these. This is just a little pad. It goes over the end pin and pulls around uh, onto the back like this. I can actually pop it on really quickly. Um, Geva, G-E-W-A. Um, uh, I think it's a German um, company for violin and string cases and a few other things. Um, makes a, a, a shoulder pad um, in this shape. Um, this is kind of the cheap knockoff version of it. But it goes on like that. Um, this is a particularly nice one for me. I think it doesn't uh, lose my sense of the instrument being balanced and held in the same way, but it does sort of fill in just a tiny little bit of the gap that, that would be there. So same thing, collarbone, you can hear it flopping, collarbone, uh, look to the left, look down, arch my back just a little bit, um, left hand has it. And if that way, if I need to let go for a moment, you can see um, this kind of covers in just a little bit, and I don't have to raise it a great deal. It's uh, uh, So I find this particular pad to be sort of comfortable if I need it. If I'm playing something excruciatingly difficult, or maybe I'm playing um, in a tiny pit orchestra, and I don't have a lot of room to play, and I need to adjust the way that I, I angle the instrument, um, something like this can be helpful. Um, otherwise, cloths, either silk or good old-fashioned washcloths, um, can help. I, this is sort of my fundamental approach to holding the instrument without a, a shoulder rest. Um, and I, I hope that helps. Um, let me know if anyone has any questions or uh, if anyone else has any other methods that they use for holding it. Um, and I'd be happy to, to talk about those in the comments or in another video. Thanks. Happy practicing.